In the heart of 5th century Britain, a land in upheaval as Anglo-Saxon warriors like Hengist and Horsa set foot on its shores. Leading bands of settlers across the North Sea, these legendary brothers clashed with native leaders such as King Vortigern, igniting battles that would shape the destiny of the island. These epic confrontations didn't just alter the course of history, they became embedded in the very DNA of the people. Now, scientists are using new genetic techniques to unravel how these early conflicts and migrations have left a lasting legacy on the ancestry of modern Britons. Over the last 2,000 years, the British Isles have seen several major waves of immigration, all well documented in history. These include the Roman military invasions and settlements in the first century AD, the migration of people from the North Sea region of Europe, known as the Anglo-Saxons, between approximately 400 and 650 AD, the arrival of Scandinavians during the late Saxon Viking period from 800 to 1000 AD, and the Norman invasion in 1066 AD. These events, along with earlier and later population movements, have contributed to the complex ancestry of the modern British population. On a large scale, people across Great Britain are quite similar in their DNA from north to south. However, recent research has found that in specific areas, especially in the north and west, there are noticeable genetic differences between groups of people. In contrast, southern and eastern England display notable genetic uniformity, particularly in areas where archaeologists find early Anglo-Saxon artefacts, cemeteries and settlements. Various estimates have been made regarding the proportion of Anglo-Saxon genetic ancestry in England, with the latest fine-scale genetic analysis suggesting it is most likely between 10 to 40 percent. Even large-scale studies of modern genetic data struggle to show a clear impact of the Anglo-Saxon migrations for two key reasons. First, using modern DNA to estimate historical migrations is difficult because both the genetic state of the native population before the migration and the genetic makeup of the immigrants are unknown and must be inferred at the same time. Second, when the source population is genetically similar to the native population, migrations become hard to measure due to minimal genetic differences. This is particularly relevant for the Anglo-Saxon migrations in Britain, given the close genetic ties across Europe. To address these challenges, scientists used ancient DNA and innovative methods. They analyzed whole genome sequences from 10 ancient samples from archaeological sites in East England, dating to the late Iron Age and the early to middle Anglo-Saxon periods. This allowed them to directly measure the genetic impact of the Anglo-Saxon migrations. From this, they estimated that about 38% of the ancestry of the present-day East English population comes from Anglo-Saxon migrants. Their findings also show evidence of intermixing between migrants and natives during the early Anglo-Saxon period, with the Anglo-Saxon migrants being closely related to modern Dutch and Danish populations. Researchers compared rare genetic variants found in less than 1% of people in ancient DNA from East England with modern DNA from Finland, Spain, Italy, the Netherlands and Denmark. The results showed clear differences in how ancient samples shared these rare variants with modern populations. For example, Middle Anglo-Saxon samples from Hingston shared more rare variants with the Dutch, while Iron Age samples were closer to patterns seen in Spain. Early Anglo-Saxon samples from Oakington showed mixed patterns, with some similar to Middle Anglo-Saxons and others closer to the Iron Age. These findings suggest a blend of ancestries over time, with rare genetic changes providing clues about more recent population histories. Scientists also examined DNA from 30 modern British individuals from East England, Wales and Scotland to compare with the ancient samples. 
they found that modern DNA was generally closer to the Iron Age samples than to the Anglo-Saxon ones. Samples from East England shared slightly more traits with the Dutch, while Scottish samples were more similar to the Iron Age group. Scientists found that East Englanders have about 38% Anglo-Saxon ancestry on average, while Welsh and Scottish samples have about 30%. Samples from Kent showed similar Anglo-Saxon ancestry, around 37%, while Cornwall had slightly less. Interestingly, differences between modern groups in Britain were small compared to the variation seen in ancient samples. Other historical migrations, such as those during Roman or Norman times, could have also influenced the results, but this would only be significant if their genetic contribution was large and matched the Dutch-Spanish comparisons used in this study. To better understand the patterns in shared DNA, scientists developed a new method called rare coal. This technique constructs a family tree showing relationships between modern European populations and includes ancient samples within it. While it doesn't account for every detail of European history, like mixing between populations after they split, it's a useful tool to explore the connections between immigrants and native populations in England. Rare coal focuses on rare genetic mutations to determine how long ago populations separated rather than looking at broader genetic differences. When tested, it accurately traced when populations split and their sizes, even working well with smaller samples like those from Denmark. Scientists found that Europe divided into northern and southern groups about 7,000 years ago, with further separations occurring around 5,000 years ago among populations from Britain, the Netherlands, Denmark and Finland. Interestingly, the results varied depending on which region of Britain was studied. Samples from Kent were more closely related to the Dutch, reflecting higher Anglo-Saxon ancestry in southern England. In contrast, samples from Cornwall and Orkney were less closely related to continental Europe, indicating less influence from later migrations like the Anglo-Saxons. The study also found that Italians and Spaniards share a relatively recent genetic link from about 2,600 years ago, likely due to migration or shared ancestry from an older population. Most of the Anglo-Saxon samples connected closely with the Dutch and Danish branches, while the Iron Age samples linked to a common Northern European ancestor shared by many populations. One early Anglo-Saxon sample, labelled O4, matched the Iron Age pattern, suggesting it came from the local British population. Another sample, O3, showed mixed ancestry, combining traits of both local and Anglo-Saxon origins. These findings support previous studies, confirming that Anglo-Saxon migrants mixed with the local population. Some individuals showed more complex ancestry, possibly influenced by earlier events like the Romano-British period. Interestingly, the placement of ancient samples on the genetic family tree was similar whether scientists used DNA from Kent or Cornwall as the modern British reference group. Iron Age samples consistently linked to a common Northern European ancestor. To verify their method, scientists tested it using modern DNA samples. They found that groups already included in their genetic tree correctly mapped to their expected branches. Interestingly, samples from Kent and Orkney, regions not initially part of the tree, aligned with the same ancestral position as the Iron Age samples. This confirmed that these populations have distinct ancestry compared to modern groups like the Cornish and others. The analysis also showed that using Kent as a reference for the British population was less effective because Kent's population is more genetically mixed due to historical migrations. To enhance future studies, scientists plan to refine their methods to better account for the complexities of population mixing and migration.
By combining ancient DNA with modern genetic data through rare allele analysis, this study unveiled new insights into the Anglo-Saxon period in Britain. When scientists analysed Anglo-Saxon samples from East England, particularly those from the Oakington Cemetery, they discovered a genetically diverse community early on. Despite their genetic differences, all individuals shared similar burial customs, suggesting cultural integration within the community. Interestingly, the wealthiest grave belonged to the native individual, challenging assumptions that immigrants held higher social status. While the study highlights genetic mixing during the Anglo-Saxon period, it rules out significant Roman influence on the diversity at Oakington due to a lack of local Roman presence and evidence of social separation during that time. In contrast, individuals from the Middle Anglo-Saxon Hingston Cemetery showed less genetic mixing, possibly reflecting ongoing immigration. This research demonstrates that migration during the Anglo-Saxon era was complex, with some groups integrating into the local population and others remaining distinct. In conclusion, the study establishes that the modern East English population derives approximately 38% of its ancestry from Anglo-Saxon migrants, with a range of 25-50% to 50 depending on the region. Anglo-Saxon genetic influence was most significant in East England, closer to immigrant sources like modern Dutch and Danish populations. Genetic evidence confirms that Anglo-Saxon migrants and native Britons mixed early, refuting claims of strong segregation during the Anglo-Saxon period. The findings challenge the historical narrative of a massive Anglo-Saxon migration displacing native Britons. Instead, the genetic contribution reflects a more complex integration process with significant continuity of pre-existing populations. It refutes the notion of a uniform Anglo-Saxon genetic signature. Early Anglo-Saxon communities like Oakington were genetically diverse, including both recent migrants and individuals of native ancestry. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.